Hi, my name is Plywood, and this is going to be a speedrun tutorial for A Bug's Life on Sony PlayStation. A Bug's Life is a run that can challenge newcomers and veterans to platform games. It is fairly simple, but can get quickly technical as you learn more about the game. While this is intended to be a puzzle platformer, we can do some skips to get around many of the puzzle solutions intended by the game. The big issues with this run are the somewhat slippery controls as you control Flick, and certain levels can punish mistakes very hard, particularly level 14. Take a look at these important notes for controlling Flick. As you run, you'll learn that certain objects and inclines will slow Flick down. At these places, either jump over the obstacle or run around it. Butt stomping is absolutely essential when you're running this game, and it'll be very useful to extending our air time for certain strategies. If you hold down the butt stomp button after you've landed, Flick will slide, causing enemies to spin and die. In general, I suggest using the analog, but there are some places in the run where D-pad is pretty good. Watch out for the Barry auto-aim. Sometimes Flick will aim at a target that you don't want to aim for. The closer you are to the target you want to hit, the more likely he's going to hit that target. Typically, you'll want to not tap L1 to recenter the camera behind, but if you need to readjust and figure out where you're looking, it's a good tool. Fix camera position by holding R1 is situationally good, specifically in certain boss fights, but typically it gives a weird camera angle that's not too good. Make sure to take a look at the options before you make a save for a new game run. Some people may prefer different button layouts. I personally just go with the default. If you don't really care for music, you might want to turn it off or turn it down. But having sound effects on is a good idea. Personally, I don't like vibration all that much. Menuing in this game is pretty simple. You want to mash X to skip cutscenes or start, and then mash X to start once the uh, load is done. Then at the end of every level, you want to mash X to skip through the score screen. After mashing through the score screen, make sure to mash right until you hear the chime, then mash X because you really don't want to save, it loses a lot of time opening up the save menu. The game will automatically move you to the right, so all you need to do is mash X to start the next level. Here's a speed comparison between the PlayStation versions of this game. PlayStation TV, aka Vita TV in Japan, is the fastest, with fastest speed enabled. However, there is some issues with latency involved with the PS TV. PS2 comes in second, with fast disk speed enabled, and PlayStation 1 emulator and PlayStation 3 are all roughly the same speed. However, I wouldn't really recommend PlayStation 3. It has the issues with latency that the PS TV has without any of the speed. The PC version is faster than all this combined, but the PC version is really a separate version on its own, since there's no analog support. As far as the N64 version, this tutorial does not cover it, and the run is a little bit different as far as the physics and jumping is concerned. Honorable mention should be made to the Japanese version, which gives you more hit points per life at the cost of more tech screens to skip through. This is a pretty good version if you're a beginner. However, it is not available digitally, unlike the US version. Level 1 is probably the simplest and easiest level in the entire run. We'll be jumping over a fence to skip through the tutorial area. Make sure to avoid the pebble, because it can slow you down. Just climb up the hill, and be aware that mosquito can drop and try to attack you. Watch out for that pebble as well, and run towards the vine. Making sure to jump, not too early, and fall. Then climb the hill, and jump onto or over the fence. Oh, yeah. Level 2 introduces us to seeds as well as has some random elements with the rubble falling from the ceiling. The platforming is a little bit more tricky than the platforming that was in level 1. At the start, watch out for the ants and the baby worms. 
While the baby worms may look cute, they will hurt you if you run into them. Watch out for going along the left side, as a centipede comes out of the wall. Then do a butt stomp to get over this wall. You're supposed to use the seed, but it's a little bit slower compared to just using the butt stomp. Watch out for the worm coming out of its hole, then stick along the left side. This is going to be a bit of a tricky jump. You want to jump before we hit this point on the corner. The wall is just enough of a platform that we can use it to our advantage. In this example, I run in the middle to adjust the camera. However, you can jump blindly onto the platform from the wall. This does save a little bit of time since you're not adjusting your movement. However, I don't recommend it for beginners. You don't need to jump diagonally to get over. Instead, you can jump along the wall to get across. After that jump, we're going to be sticking to the right side. Be aware that there is a centipede coming up, and you want to stick more to the right side to avoid it. The next wall, we're just going to be using the seed. So jump into the seed, wait for Flick to bounce enough, and then go over. As the rubble comes down, it comes down randomly, so be aware of that. It's inevitable that you're going to get damaged at some point or another during the run. Ideally, you get damaged in such a way that you get pushed forward, as in that example. This is what you would call a damage boost. The final cliff has different approaches to it. You can run along the right wall and jump from that. Uh-oh, there's a back boost, which is what we don't want to see when we take damage. You can also jump from the little pebble on the right side to get across. Or you can jump from the ground below onto the platform. The choice is yours, however the wall is probably the easiest to do. Then run along the left side to get to the council chamber. Level 3 is our first boss fight, and it's probably the easiest of the bunch. At the very start, make sure to jump so we can get over the pebbles. Yeah! Then jump onto the hover flower and get the super berry. Jump to the side, and then start throwing the super berries at Thumper. When he gets to half HP, he flies up, but sometimes this doesn't happen, so be ready for it if it does happen to get some time save. If you fix the camera with R1, it's a little bit easier to see where he's flying to, then you can adjust behind yourself with L1. This is personal preference though. Make sure to get as close as possible when you're throwing the berries. And when you defeat Thumper, exit the stage as quickly as possible so you don't have to watch the end cutscene. In level 4, we'll be using a dandelion to fly across the riverbed, making sure to get past the thorn plant. This level isn't too bad as long as you take the proper precautions. Yeah! After we bounce into the seed, bounce into the middle of the dandelion to launch yourself up. Then go for this spot. We go. You'll want to throw berries because these dragonflies can cause you to fall, and that is a big time loss. Then go to this spot. Making sure to hesitate for a moment over the hover flower so you can gain some height. Do that for the last one as well, or if you're really scared, go for the one on the right. Fly in between the thorn plant and run to the exit, making sure to butt stomp just in case the boll weevil hits you. Up until this point, the run has been fairly simple, but level 5 completely changes that. It's quite possible to die here with no fault of your own. Not only do you have to deal with random elements throughout the level, this is one of the hardest if not the hardest levels to optimize in the entire game. We'll go over the simple approach to the first jump. Hug the left side and be aware that those bugs can get in your way. Butt stomp around the corner to take out the weevil. And you might as well butt stomp for this weevil as well so he doesn't run into you and cause you to drop your seed. Then round the corner and throw the seed at the wall and bounce over. Don't bother picking up that super berry because there's a homing berry coming up if you really want the damage output. 
but you don't need to actually use that seed. In fact, we can use this little hump in the floor to jump over the wall with a butt stomp. The timing of this jump is pretty strict, and since the seed is not too far away, you have about three tries before you start losing time here. You can use the floor and its dirt marks or the wall itself as a visual cue of when to jump. This jump will take practice, but if you're a beginner, I don't think you really need to worry about this quite yet. Watch out for those pits. They're scattered throughout the level, and if you fall into them, you lose a life instantly. We're going to take the first left to pick up a leaf token. Be careful of the bull weevil and the telescope. And jump onto the ramp. I like jumping around the corners just so the corners don't slow me down, but you can run around them. And ideally you would run along the left side to get around this egg. If you want to pick up that homing berry in the egg, you're more than welcome to. Pick up the seed and be aware that the bull weevil can run into you and cause you to drop it. The bull weevil's movements is random. Then bring this seed over here and throw it at the wall to get over the wall. If you are jumping around the corner, make sure to do a small jump so you don't jump over the leaf token. You can go along the right side of this egg as well to pick up the seed. Again, you really can't predict the bull weevil's movement, but try to throw the seed as early as possible, that way you're not going to get knocked off your course. It doesn't really matter where you throw the leaf seed, however, there is a very optimal seed placement that'll create a very fast climb. In this clip, I throw the seed at a certain point and throw it at the wall at a certain angle, causing the seeds to bounce in such a way that when I bounce onto the mushroom, it'll automatically land me on the leaf. I don't know how easy this is, but it's worthwhile sharing. You don't need to pick up the next two leaf tokens, but it is an option if you're starting out. You're going to have to go to the right side over here and be aware of these bugs and the pits. Then pick up the third leaf token off of that bug. And then backtrack to the wall you were at previously. All you need to do now is jump into the seed and switch to the level 3 seed. It's worthwhile mentioning now that you can change the seed type while you're in the air, making it a little bit more optimal than running at it, pressing triangle to switch it, and then jumping into it. You can also jump into the second leaf rather than the first leaf. But you don't need to pick up that third leaf token. Instead, we're going to place the seed with the level 2 leaf token in a very specific spot in the corner where the height of the ground is high enough that we'll be able to jump over the wall. Now it can be further to the left, but ideally it's smack dab right in the corner. Here's the ideal spot to throw it right in the corner, which makes it the easiest. It can be a little bit more to the left, but it makes the jump a little bit more difficult. And we're trying to jump within this range over that lip to get over the wall. Butt stomping around the corner will deal with the fly in case he's in your way. This jump is going to take practice, like most of the jumps that are hard in this level. After you get up, jump around the corner and jump immediately over the pit. We're now in the situation where seed bombs will start dropping from the ceiling. These fall randomly and they could mess you up, causing you to die into a pit or screw up a very crucial jump. Stick to the middle of this canyon, as there are centipedes on the left and right sides that you want to avoid. Then, if you took the four token route, go to the right side to pick up this token by the cliff. And then change this seed to the level four leaf. Run to the exit, and don't jump into the telescope. Now there is a faster route to get the fourth token, but it involves a very tricky jump 
that uses a similar height mechanic to the first jump early in the level. I don't really recommend this because if you're going to go through this kind of effort, you might as well do the two token route. Speaking of two token route, uh, time for the most infamous jump in this entire game. So we're going to be picking up a seed under this safe route. Make sure to butt stomp these spiders, and then bring the leaf token over to this position to throw it right at the wall. You want it to land at the wall. That way when you try to do this jump, when you fall, you'll fall right back on the leaf and you can try again. Now I'll be honest, this jump is pretty hard to explain. Essentially you want to jump just after Flick hits the height of his jump. He'll be going down just a tiny little bit. If you fail, he'll butt stomp back down. There's a certain range to it, and I use the pebble on the wall as a visual cue. As far as I can tell, the angle of flick doesn't really matter, as long as you're facing the wall in some way. Be aware that the game can try to completely destroy you and drop a seed bomb just as you're jumping over the cliff. It's happened to me multiple times. It's just something you have to deal with with this level. Now you don't need to actually pick up that leaf seed, and it can save about 10 seconds if you just use the mushroom. However, it adds yet another jump to the equation. This approach also makes repeated attempts slower. You can do attempts more quickly with the leaf seed. I don't really recommend this unless you're trying to go for the fastest of fast times. Level 6 is not quite as tricky as level 5, but it can mess you up. We need to make sure that we don't fall from the platform, because it causes time loss. I prefer using D-pad for this area, but it's up to you. As you approach the first platform, you can either climb the pebble for safety, or jump as I do, onto the corner. Now on the second platform, you want to jump as early as possible to get to the third platform. This is because the start of the second platform has a greater height than the end of it. Or you could just try to jump at the end. Up to you. Now it is a bit faster to cut through onto the platform in the middle. However, it's a little bit tricky and risky. If you're not comfortable with it, just hug the wall. Pick up the super berry and jump onto the platform to start throwing the berries at the bird. Trying to get as close as possible so that the travel distance is short. Then exit the level as quickly as possible when you see the bird. Now if you happen to fall after picking up the super berry, don't freak out. There's a hover flower that spawns that you can use to get back up. You can fly back up into the big platform in the middle, but it's a little bit tricky, so just hover back to the left, then jump over. In level 7, we have to collect grain to get through a 10 grain, 20 grain, and 30 grain checkpoint. However, we can skip collecting 30 grain and jump over the 30 grain door. The main challenge of this area is killing the enemies for their grain and picking up enough grain to advance. The jump over the 30 grain door is also tricky. There are different ways of getting this grain from the spider. The fastest way is to butt stomp into it along the outer edge. If you butt stomp within the middle, it'll splat the spider, destroying the grain. If you're not comfortable with this, just throw berries at the spider instead. Because if you do splat the spider, that means you'll have to do a backup grain instead. After taking out the first spider, run along the wall. Don't go out of your way to butt stomp the second spider, we'll come back for him. Smoothly curving to get this grain without losing your momentum is pretty tough. And as you round this corner, jump over the taxi cab beetle. Pick up the grain around the box. Then pick up this token and change this seed into the super berry. Now you can't take out that fly if it's in a good position. But otherwise, run around the corner and take out these bugs. If you can get the invincibility, Make sure to do so so you don't have to deal with the ooze. 
And if you need a backup, there's a spider over here by the door. Typically, you're going to take damage from the ooze. But if you time your jump just right, you'll be able to bounce off before taking damage. Now, we can't control how the bugs move, but there is a possibility that the bug will land their grain in a wall. And if that happens, you'll have to go for a backup grain or wait for the bug to respawn. Being able to adjust your grain route depending on what happens with the bugs is important. You just have to identify from this course which bugs you'll be able to hit easily, such as the flies. Be aware that the grain will disappear after about 5 seconds or so, so don't delay picking up the grain from the bugs. Typically I try to jump into the grain because it spawns in the air, and you don't have to wait then. As you get past checkpoint 1, run straight forward and take out this bug. Underneath that corner and take out the spider. Run around the bottle, and you can take out this fly if you'd like. But otherwise, jump over here, onto the ooze, and take out that taxi cab beetle. Try to jump onto the cart on the left side so you don't lose momentum, and then take out this fly. Run onto the left edge of that umbrella symbol to get a hidden grain, and then take out the spider underneath. Then run to the right to pick up that grain, and take out this spider. Be careful not to run past grain, it's very easy to do so. Also be aware that you can go to the right side of the ooze, but it's a little bit slower. It's faster just to run along the left edge and take the damage, it's fine. Just make sure to take out the taxi cab as early as possible. The routing here really is dependent on what bugs you took out during the first area. Watch out for that seed, it's a pretty cramped area so it's hard to avoid. Try to note for yourself which bugs you took out for their grain and which you didn't. That will change your grain count, which you can see in the bottom left corner. Getting past checkpoint 2, we're now going to do the 30 grain skip. Make sure to jump around that box and butt stomp because the spider can get in your way. Same thing with this spider, it might end up being right by the cardboard box. Now we're going to jump up to these cans. You can either jump off of the card or jump off of the matchbox. Then you're going to run at the corner and butt stomp at just the right time to get over the door. Now to get over the door, you need to make sure you don't butt stomp too late. You're trying to have the maximum height possible to get over the door. So butt stomp just a little bit before you hit the door itself and try to jump as close to the edge of the cardboard as possible. This jump is practice heavy, and it's worthwhile doing because getting the extra 10 grain is a bit of a hassle. As long as you get it within 3 tries, you should still be saving time over picking up more grain. Then run into your circus friends, preferably the ladybug or the caterpillar, and then end the level. Level 8 is the last stage that can be classified as a 1 out of 5. Everything from here on out isn't going to be quite that easy. We need to meet up with the entire circus troupe. It's a pretty quick level. We'll meet Dim, then Tuck and Roll, then Manny and Gypsy, and finally ending with Rosie. At the very start of the level, you can decide what route you want to take to get to Dim. If you're taking the ground route, you want to make sure to flick a little bit to the left once you get past the can, just so you don't run into the box. Look out for the flies, because they can run into you if they want to. Taking the upper route is a little bit faster than taking the ground route, but not by much. At max a second. If you take the upper route, it's a little bit easier to jump to the cardboard rather than the can. Do a butt stomp once you fall off the can, just to make sure you don't run into the fly. Be aware though that the fly on top of the cardboard can hit you if it wants to. If you just hold up, straight up, you'll run into the cardboard, but not really that big of a deal when you're learning. It just slows you down a little bit. Whenever you interact with a character, you can skip their dialogue by pressing start twice. There's a certain rhythm to it, 
that you'll get used to as time goes oh. by. Dude. After turning to the right, run straight ahead to the can to hit the hover flower and jump onto the can, jump over to the box, and meet up with Tuck and Roll. I need super jump. You can do dialogue skipping pretty quickly, but make sure you hear the audio first before you press start twice. In reality, you can press start before you even hear them talk, but that requires very good timing and knowing when the dialogue will start. Avoid the ticket on the ground, then angle yourself towards the left of the corner and jump up. This will allow us to avoid using the ramp. Here's an example of sticking to the ground rather than using the box. Cutting through on top does save some time though. Make sure to run into Manny rather than Gypsy. After Manny and Gypsy, make sure you're going towards the right rather than the left. Sometimes the camera can get a little bit disorienting, so just adjust your camera if you're unsure of which side you're on. Butt stomp in case the fly gets in your way, then exit the level once you see Rosie on screen. Level 9 creatively uses a scene from the movie for this boss fight but it can be a bit disorienting running around this rotating can. With situational awareness, this level isn't too bad, but it can be pretty difficult to learn at first. After meeting up with Tuck and Roll, you have an option between doing a somewhat hard jump or just falling to the ground. The faster method to upgrade your berry is to jump off the side of the can to get the gold berry. Jumping is a good way to close the distance between you and Thud. Then you want to run into the middle of the can, running back and forth as he flies back and forth. Rotating the camera first is a very good way to make sure you avoid the objects flying across the can. But as long as you know roughly how the cycle works, you should be able to run back and forth without rotating the camera. If you're really scared for HP, you can always pick up HP that Thud drops whenever you damage him. As you can see, I go back and forth in the middle, using the lines of the can as a visual cue of where to stand roughly. Alternatively, you could go to the end of the can to get the super berry, then run all the way back. I don't recommend this method much anymore, as doing this jump is not too tricky off of the side of the can for the gold berry. It saves time, and it removes some risk of getting hit by objects. You can go up closer to him if you'd like when throwing the berries especially if you want to pick up the HP that he drops. But unless you're really concerned for lives, I don't really think you need to. You can use the ball to gain some height so the berry doesn't have to travel as far. Just make sure to get on the ball when he gets past the ball so you don't take damage. For your information, you cannot use R1 to lock the camera in this level. Like the other boss fights, make sure to exit out of the level when you defeat the boss. In level 10, we have to collect five bird pieces scattered throughout the level. Don't let the cheerful music of Clover Forest fool you. This level is pretty challenging, as there's a lot you have to do in a short period of time. Not only that, there's a skip that you can do at the very start. Yeah! At the second leaf stem on the right side, we're going to be jumping into a corner by that leaf stem. You want to be on the left side facing right and then jump twice. And after you get up top, you're gonna jump immediately onto the leaf itself to get over to the other side to meet up with Manny. This jump isn't particularly hard, but it can sometimes fail. You can face the corner from the other direction, just make sure you're facing the corner. In order to do Manny skip, we have to jump into Manny and still be in the air after the scene has fully faded to black. The problem with this is, Manny could be in a lot of different locations, and Gypsy could get in the way. Now if you run into Manny normally, you have some lines of dialogue to skip. But don't skip the third line of dialogue since it's tied to an animation, so you don't save time from skipping it. Same with the final line, when he throws the bird piece out. Try to jump just a little bit before you'd run into him normally. You want to have enough room so that you can get to the height of your jump as you hit Manny. And now 
You'll know it worked if at the very start of the cutscene it fades to black, and then you will regain control of Flick. This will allow us to set ourselves up by the Chinese takeout container in such a way that we'll be able to run forward once Manny starts saying his line of dialogue and get forward earlier than we should. While Manny says his second line, you can push Gypsy closer to the Chinese takeout container. That will let her fly more quickly into the box. There's a certain angle to this leaf that if you jump in the middle, you'll be able to run through the leaf. Typically though, the leaf will kill your momentum after you jump into it. Run ahead past those pebbles to this hover flower. Launch yourself up. And then you're going to jump into this corner. Pick up the bird piece, and then pick up the token right above the bug. But stump off of the cliff for the ant below. Then jump into this corner, and then this corner. You can curve your jump to pick up that token without having to kill that bug. Pick up the spawner so you can get the seed that spawns below. Then throw the seed by this clover, and then launch yourself up to this cannon plant token off in the distance. But stomp the ant as you come back, and then you have to launch yourself with the cannon plant. Getting into the cannon plant can be a little bit annoying. Potentially, if you go onto the edge, you'll just bounce off the corner of the plant. You want to try to jump into the middle of the cannon plant. As you can see, being precise with your butt stomp or jump into the cannon plant is important. You don't have to actually have this seed in this exact spot, it could be a little bit more forward, but the point is, is that we have the seed in such a place that we'll be able to launch ourselves onto the plateau and launch ourselves to pick up the token off in the distance. But stomp off of the plateau because there's a mosquito below that might hit you. And then you're going to run forward past this berry, plant this seed, and you can adjust the camera here. And the goal here is that we're going to launch ourselves into the final bird piece, rather than using the circus friends to get it for us, because that is a lot slower. You want to aim for roughly the middle of the leaf. That way you'll drop straight into the bird piece. If you end up landing into the circus friends, just skip through the dialogue as quickly as you can. And then stand in this spot and jump for the final piece. In level 11, we have to climb a tree and collect five blueberry scouts. We'll be using the root of the tree to climb it rather than going around. A mistake or error here could cause us to fall, losing a lot of time. That is why this level can be difficult. At the start of the level, you're going to do a 180 as we go towards this root. Climbing this root, we're going to be hugging the corner of the root. Once the corner is gone, we're going to curve a little bit to the left so we're on the right edge of that circular spot on the root. You're going to be doing little tiny jumps repeatedly here. Sometimes you'll be able to run up the root with a certain kind of momentum, and sometimes your momentum can be killed if you're a little bit off course. Just pay very close attention to the way the root looks, and you can follow the path. Again, you hug the corner and then direct yourself a little bit to the left to go up that right side of the circular spot. Then curve to the right so you can get up the route. There's no point to skipping the dialogue for each blueberry rescue as it's tied to an animation. Acorns will come down the tree and there's different ways of dealing with them. Jump over them jump around them, throw berries at them to interrupt their momentum, and then get around them. Let's show how to climb the tree safely. Throw berries at mosquitoes because they can get in your way. 
then deal with the acorn however you see fit. Now we want to pick up the super berry if we want to be safe, because then it only takes one berry to take out the mosquitoes. Timing your vine jumps can be more tricky than you think. Just make sure that you jump at such a point that you'll make the jump. Don't jump too early and then fall down. It's a huge waste of time. You want to move along the edge of the tree to jump to the web string. Then jump, and jump, and then jump along the outside for the final vine. Now we're going to climb the tree with more risky strats, trying to go around the corners and taking risky jumps. Be aware that if you start sliding after landing into a scout, you won't fall off the tree, which is pretty nice. Hug the edge here and skip the super berry, if you don't want to pick it up. If you begin to slide off of the tree, jump to try to recover yourself. Be aware that if you do fall off of the tree, key thing is try to hug the tree if you fall. The gravity in Bug's Life is pretty slow, so you should be able to land back onto the tree. You are going to lose quite a bit of time though if this happens. Rain, rain, rain. In this example, you hug the edge of the tree, then jump into the final scout, Dot. She can be flying in a random pattern, so just try to jump into her as well as you can. Level 12 is one of those kinds of levels where it's easy until it isn't. The big challenge with this level is the random element of the ant colony throwing red berries at you, which you do not want. Molt himself is pretty harmless. The issue is getting to the point where you can damage Molt. Do a small jump to the left to avoid this ant, because on digital versions a big jump will create lag. But stomp the ant and then throw the seed at this corner. You want to jump on the edge of the mushroom to get this token up in the air. Then change the seed type to the super berry and hope no red berries land on you. Molt can end up in various different spots, but we want to stand underneath this leaf roof and start throwing berries at him as he stands up. You can spam berries at him if you like, but this can cause him to go really far away. So you can either time your berries to Molt's recovery animation, or throw two berries at once, just to hedge your bet. Once he's at his last chunk of health, you can just start running at him and throwing berries in his face. The point of butt stomping the ant in the pit is for a more direct line and so that the ant does not get in our way. You can't actually jump to the seed from the pit, but it's pretty tricky, so it's easier just to jump around. And if you're confident in your spot at the mushroom, you can actually just go for it on the first bounce, but it's a bit tricky. Again, you want to adjust the camera so you can see where Molt is, and pay very close attention to how Molt recovers. That way you can adjust your timing on the berry throws. Again, it might be a little bit easier just to do two berries at once, rather than spamming. Just make sure to be in the middle to the back of the flower spot. This is to make sure that the red berries don't land on us while we're attacking Molt. Now you can bring the seed back to another token spot, but I don't really prefer this. Not only do you have to go further back, but that ant can get in your way unless you butt stomp into it. And with further distance between you and Molt, there's a greater likelihood that you might run into a red berry. In very rare circumstances, Molt can end up on the top of the leaf. If this happens, just run out into the middle so he'll chase you off. If you're feeling cheeky, you could stop in place and turn around and throw a super berry as you approach the spot that you want to stand on.
You sure you want to do this? In level 13, we'll be solving a puzzle in a way not intended by the developers. There are three difficult parts to this level. The jump onto tuck and roll, picking up the berry shooter token, and using the berry shooter to save Ada. We need to gather four yeah. leaf tokens, you and two of them are with tuck and roll. Now you have to understand, tuck and roll jump you when you jump, so you gotta commit to when you jump. If tuck and roll aren't close enough together, you might miss this jump. They need to be next to each other so you can get up here. So be patient if they're not together, otherwise you might waste a lot of time trying to jump when you can't even do it. After you pick up the two tokens with tuck and roll, run straight forward through the leaf to pick up the third leaf token. Then run along this berry and go on this line to go pick up the fourth leaf token. Butt stomp to take care of that ant. Then run back to change this seed into a level 4 leaf. You can jump into the second leaf, and then once you land on the fourth leaf, you can jump off at that point to get the berry token. Now you can either run across or jump along this corner. This corner jump is fairly easy, so I recommend it. Then, transform this seed into the berry shooter, and you're going to approach this area. You can be a little bit to the left, or a little bit to the right, but you want to be in this spot specifically. You can't control how Hopper flies, so hopefully the berries will start hitting him. It's the first two hits that are kind of tricky, but after that point he'll start flying low. You can track him a little bit more easily if he's flying low. After nine hits, he'll drop Ada. You want to predict where Ada's going to drop so you can move there as quickly as possible. Under the best circumstances, you'll start hitting Hopper immediately once you get into the spot. Try to track him with the camera. The camera pointed in this way at the tree tends to give pretty good results. And once Ada falls into you, exit the level. Level 14 is pretty difficult. Not only because if you die, you return to the start of the level, but the course is pretty complex, requiring a lot of memorization and ability to adapt to the bugs flying around. If you do lose your momentum by hitting a wall, hitting a bug, or hitting an object, it's possible that a downward spiral will occur, where Hopper will come behind you and start hitting you over and over again, not allowing you to advance. There are two big things you need to know. One, fly on the ground as much as possible, because flying up in the air does slow you down after a while, unless you're trying to avoid objects. And two, you want to grab grain as much as possible because it speeds you up. This spot right here is very difficult. You're going to slalom, that is curve, right to left to right to avoid these bugs. Then as you turn this corner, pick up the grain and fly around or over the dragonfly and the shell. If you do end up dying deep into the course, it's not a bad idea to exit to stage select so you can get your grain back for speed boosts. Again, if a bug starts flying into your way, try to fly above it, because running into it will kill all your momentum. Fly over the spawner and the pebbles. Then at this point, be very careful about this curve. You want to hug it as tightly as possible so you don't run into the feather. Pick up the grain as well as you can, curving left to right, and fly over the bee, stick, and shell. Then as you come into this next hall, look out for the pebbles on the right, and the feather in the middle. Fly over the feather and the pebble, and then pick up the grain. And you can fly over this bee and the pebble. 
Now you can fly underneath these sticks or fly over them, but make sure to fly immediately after picking up that grain so you don't fly into the wall. Then potentially fly over those dragonflies and this weevil. Be careful of that bee, he can sometimes get in your way. Then fly over this spawner and the pebbles and the weevil. Be careful of this bee coming up because it can sometimes get in your way as well. Now in this example, I fly over to the right, then fly over this stick, but you don't actually have to do that necessarily, and I'll show that later. You can actually fly through this stick on the right side, and then just fly a little bit high to get over that water droplet and the pebble. Now here's an example at full speed, just to see how it looks like. That slalom motion takes some practice, as well as memorizing this whole course. If you want to be safe, fly more over the bugs so you don't take a lot of damage. Sometimes the spawners will give you invincibility, but you really can't rely on that. More often than not, if you go for that grain by the worm, you'll get hurt. So be aware of that. You could skip it if you want. Sometimes when you take damage, you won't be knocked backwards, but don't count on that. In that example, I actually flew below the stick rather than above it. Safe states and practicing on emulator are really going to help here so you can practice certain spots of this course. The end part is pretty tricky because of the dragonfly, but you could actually hug the left side as shown there and not get hit by any of the sticks. Just watch out for the dragonfly so you can adjust your approach accordingly. Level 15, the final level of the game. Test your ability to adapt, keep your cool, and platform some of the hardest platforms in the game. With some knowledge and information, you'll be able to be prepared for whatever Hopper throws at you. Let's discuss the multiple ways to get a super berry, starting with the safest and easiest approach. Pick up the seed and drop it over by this token. Be careful of the grasshopper, he can sometimes get in your way. And you really have no way to deal with him at this point without a super berry. We're gonna walk along this wall to a cliff edge where a super berry is sitting. Make sure to put the seed right by the cliff and launch yourself up along the wall to pick up the super berry. Then take this line to where Hopper is. All other approaches involve approaching this stick and climbing up to the plateau, but you should be aware that the stick itself is very slippery and a narrow platform. You can either jump up it or run up it, but be very careful when you're jumping onto the stick. You could easily overshoot or slide off. It's going to take some practice to be able to climb this stick easily without falling, especially since this is the last level and tensions can start running high. In this approach, we'll be using the dandelion to fly across, but make sure to bounce into the dandelion rather than the outer edge. It's very easy to just bounce off and fall rather than actually picking up the dandelion. You can actually jump from the stick to the dandelion seed. To make it easier on yourself, adjust the camera to make sure you're going the correct way, then fly to this platform. This platforming is very tricky as the second platform is extremely narrow and it's easy to fall off. You're basically going to want to jump the moment you land. Good luck. You can also jump to this next platform with the super berry, but you could also just fall to the side as well and then run to hopper. You don't need to adjust the camera to use the dandelion, but you better know what angle to go at for the platform that you need to fly to. If you do land on the side, be careful of the pebbles if you run into them and lose your momentum. Now you don't really need to use the dandelion. However, this jump is very precise and tight. We're going to have to jump off the corner to the other corner, making good use of the butt stomp. This is definitely faster than using the dandelion, but is extremely tight. 
try to jump in such a way that the gap between you and the other platform is minimized. You don't even need to adjust the camera, just like with the dandelion, but this represents the hardest way to get the superberry. It looks cool, but it's very tight, very, very tight. Jump off the stick into the corner, making good use of the butt stomp. Now let's talk about Hopper. He could be in various positions in this open area. We want to get as close to him as possible. He will start flying at us and then start rotating around us. Locking the camera here can help you with following him around. Once you've finally done damage to his health bar, stop throwing berries at him so he can fly to the next area. As we enter area 2, we're going to be sticking along the right side, making sure to avoid the grasshopper or throwing berries at him if he gets in our way. And then we have the first set of platforms, and they can be pretty annoying to climb up. Try to jump early so you don't jump into the wall and fall down. Now throughout area 2, you'll have some decisions to make. The closer Flick is to Hopper, the more likely the berry will connect but that involves more platforming and more potential for error. So you can throw berries from certain ledges and try to hit Hopper from far away. But if you do so, Flick may aim at a grasshopper down below, or he may not even connect the shot. Hopper flies to the right, then the left, then the right, then the left, and then approaches the door to the hill. Be aware that you only need to hit him once per spot. So after you hit him in the first spot, there's a lot of different ways to approach this. My preferred method is to jump from this platform to this platform and then throw berries from the ledge. The reason why I prefer this is that going up to him up close and personal introduces more platforming and doesn't really save time. That's because you have to follow him back to the other side and you're kind of playing catch up if you're on that side with him. Plus, there are no grasshoppers that are going to mess with Flick's auto-aim as you throw berries at Hopper. After hitting him the second time, you can either jump from L to L to get really up close and personal, or throw berries from the first L and hope they land. Then, we're going to jump over to this T platform to hit him when he's flying overhead. Again, try to be as close as you can when throwing the berries. Then he'll finally fly towards the door. Once he lines up with the three pebbles on the left side, throw your berry and he'll start going towards the final area. Be aware that sometimes Hopper can get some cheesy shots in and cause you to fall down. This is why learning the backups is so important. Now if you do fall when going back to the third position, just start climbing those two platforms again and jump over and start hitting them. If you fall while you're going towards the fourth spot, go over to the wall, jump onto the mushroom, and start aiming upwards. Eventually the shot will connect, but you might take some damage while doing so. If you fall while approaching the second spot, tough cookies you're going to have to go back to the initial set of platforms and climb back up. If you fall on the right side after the second shot, you can actually jump past this gap. Thankfully the last area, the hill, is a lot easier than area 2 if you ask me. It's just about timing your jumps so you don't land onto the edge of those platforms, and throwing at the predetermined points where he stops. Be careful of these grasshoppers because they can get in your way. I jump on the corner over here because there's a grasshopper that could sneak attack you if you hug the left corner. Once he crosses the corner edge of this platform, you can throw a berry at him to damage him. Then climb up, making sure to jump early enough so you don't hit the edge of the platforms. Camera lock is pretty useful here just to know where he's going. And then just rotate as he rotates around you with the D-pad or the analog stick. Congratulations, you have beaten a bug's life. Help me! Help me! Ah! Thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you if you are interested in running this game. 
I want to give thanks to Aaron and Bounding Gray for getting me into this game in the first place, and Jumpy Luff, Master Leo Blue, and V Snake for their contributions to the route. And special thanks goes to my supporters. I really do appreciate the support that people give me on Twitch and YouTube. If this was helpful for you, please consider supporting my work. Thank you, and remember... Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! Oh!